Chelsea have finally gained some good form as of late, and as we continue with Premier League action, the Blues take on Lancashire side, Burnley, away from home at Turf Moor. But who will play, and how do Chelsea win? Let's get to it. Lads, lasses, and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC, and welcome to the lead-in. Like always, I'm going to be predicting the lineups that I feel will play, and show how I believe our team could set up tactically. So, without further ado, let's firstly look at our opponents for this match. Burnley are currently sitting in 18th in the Premier League table, firmly in the relegation zone after some unexpectedly bad form. Burnley have one win from seven, and that was against arguably the weakest team in the league, Luton Town, last time out. Admittedly, Burnley's fixture list has been one of the most difficult out of any team in the league. They've had to face City, Villa, Spurs, Man United and Newcastle already this season, which is no easy task for a recently promoted side. Similar to our last opponents, Burnley have had a rather leaky defence because of this, having a minus 10 goal difference and conceding the second highest number of goals after bottom place Sheffield United. Chelsea will see this game as an opportunity to score goals and get some more attacking confidence. Looking at the head-to-head -head, we can see that Burnley have lost the majority of games against Chelsea in recent memory, with their last victory coming all the way back in 2017 in a game that ended 3-2. They'll be looking to put in a performance similar to that against us this time and build off of their victory versus Luton last weekend. So how will they plan on trying to achieve that? Let's look at the team. Burnley, managed by ex-Manchester City captain Vincent Kompany, usually play some form of 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3. I don't expect there to be many changes, if any, to the side from the Luton game, so for this one I'll be putting them into the 4-3-3 as they played versus them. First up in goal, I'm going to be putting in James Trafford. He's their number one, and I don't see this changing anytime soon. For the back four, I think this will be unchanged. We start with the right back, Welshman Connor Roberts. The same centre-back partnership will continue with Amin Al-Dakil on the right side and Jordan Bayer on the left-hand side. Finishing the defence over on the left will be the ever-reliable Charlie Taylor. Moving into the midfield three, and I don't expect any changes here either, the large Norwegian Sander Berger will play once more after his great assist last time out, with the two Joshes, Cullen and Brownhill, partnering him. The attacking trio is the area where there might be changes, and just to switch things up, I am going to be putting in one of the goal scorers off of the bench last time out, Jacob Brune Larsen, in on the right hand side, over bright teenager Luca Coliosho. On the opposite side, I think Swiss international Zeki Amdouni will retain his place, as he's been mightily impressive so far. Spearheading the team will be Burnley's top goal scorer this season, South African striker Lyle Foster. Now, as I've said in the past, I'm going to be moving away from the tactical side of things in these previews and stick to putting that in my tactical breakdowns after games, so I'm not going to talk too much about Burnley here, but I will point out some things of note about them. Firstly, they are unlike any Burnley team we have faced previously. Under company, they are a far more attack-minded team than the Burnley of old, which is partly why they are conceding so many goals. They commit men forward and have been susceptible to counter-attacks, especially from direct passes. The other thing that they've struggled with so far this season, and most of last season in the championship too, is defending set pieces. They have looked mightily disorganised from corners and free kicks around the area so far, and this could be an avenue for success for us in this one. But as I said, I'd like to focus more on Chelsea from now on, so speaking of the Blues, let's talk about Chelsea. But real quick, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Cheers! Let's start with the formation. We know it's going to be 4-3-3 again. We still have some key absentees, so I'd expect the lineup to be mostly unchanged from the game against Fulham, but there are a few tweaks that can and might be made, which I'll highlight in a moment here. So first up in goal, I'm going to be putting in, you guessed it, Robert Sanchez. He is proving to be such a great bit of business and a massive upgrade on Kepa, which I am happy to have been correct about earlier this season before we signed him. He now has the most amount of clean sheets in the league, and will be looking to continue his bid for the Golden Glove in this one. For the back four, I'm going to stick with the exact same lineup from the last two games. Mark Kukurea has been a breath of fresh air at right back so far, and with Malo Gusto and the returning Reese James both suspended for this one, I expect his out of position stint to continue. This also means that the centre back partnership of Axel Di Sassi and Thiago Silva will remain. Di Sassi has been one of our most consistently good performers so far this season and Thiago Silva was much improved in the Fulham game, so let's hope that small patch of poor form has ended now. 
over on the left hand side is going to be the man who got the assist for the first goal at Craven Cottage, Levi Colwill. I think he's really adapting well to this role and I expect him to put in another great shift against Burnley. In the midfield I'm going to keep it the same, but I will propose the idea that Moises Caicedo might be rested in this one due to the slight knock he got. He trained perfectly fine, but against a weaker team like Burnley I do see an opportunity to play Uga Chukwu instead if we don't want to risk the Ecuadorian. That being said, I will be putting in our number 25 for this game, I just think he's undroppable at the moment. The same could be said for the man sitting next to him, Enzo Fernandez. These two really have formed a great relationship on and off the pitch, and I just love seeing these two play for my club honestly. Ahead of them, I'm going to be putting in Captain Conor Gallagher in this advanced role, who was arguably player of the match last time out. I hope that people are now finally seeing the value that he brings to the team, and I for one am so glad that he didn't leave in January. For the attacking three, I will be making a change from the last game, but retaining his place is the ever impressive Cole Palmer on the right hand side. I think with him interchanging with Gallagher, this allows him to play exactly where he can be effective, in central areas or in the half space like I discussed in my tactical breakdown of the Fulham game, and I expect another assist for the lad in this one, even though he didn't actually get credited for one for some reason. Over on the left hand side, I'll be putting in Mudrick again, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Raheem Sterling or Ian Martson play here if Mudrick's injury is severe enough to take him out of the side. And finally, up top I'm going to be putting Nico Jackson back into the side. I think we have to be smart with how many minutes we are giving Broyer, especially after how tired he looked after his 60-ish minutes against Fulham. Nico will be looking to get another goal here like he did against Brighton, and give Broyer some good competition for that starting spot. Now I'm going to break down how I think we should play in order to get a result against Burnley, but before I do so, again, quick reminder that I'm doing a celebratory Q&A in an upcoming video, so if you have a question for me, Chelsea related or otherwise, and want to be featured in that video, leave your question down below with the hashtag AskMono in the comments. And whilst you're down there, you can answer the question of the day. As always, I'm going to highlight some of the comments from the last video, so here are a few responses to the last question of the day. Thanks guys for your continued support as ever. If you want your comment to be featured in the next video, leave your answer to this video's question of the day down below with QOTD at the start as always. So for this week's question of the day, we'll go for a fun one. Who, if anyone, do you think Chelsea should buy in the January transfer window and why? Alright, so how will we play? Well, I think this game will be pretty simple for Chelsea in truth. Despite the hard fixtures and their recent win, I don't think Burnley have the most confidence at the moment, and Chelsea should be able to comfortably win this if we play similarly to the Fulham game. I think Jackson and Palmer will be extremely key for us in this one. As I outlined earlier, Burnley have looked poor at defending balls in behind, and these two are the perfect pair for this type of ball. We saw how Cole was trying to release Broya in the Fulham game, and those types of passages of play are going to be pretty deadly. Palmer will be marked by Charlie Taylor, who isn't the quickest in the world, so I expect him to have a lot of time and space to play balls into the channels for Jackson, or switch the ball for Mudrick on the opposite side. I think us playing down the wings could be an avenue for success in general. Burnley commit players forward and out wide is where the spaces open up when they do. Burnley have tried to take the game to most of the teams they have played so far, and I don't expect any different from them in this one, which could open up the opportunity to play on the counter like we did against Fulham. Mudrick and Jackson's raw pace on the counter is something that Burnley will struggle to handle in my opinion, and as the team will be lopsided to the left as I have spoken about in previous videos due to Kukurea playing at right back, I see this as the main outlet for us unless Burnley adopt a more reserved playstyle. I think the majority of the time we will see something like this though, Conor Gallagher pushing out wide to allow Palmer to play as an inside 10, and Mudrick and Jackson playing almost like left and right strikers. We saw from his goal that Mudrick is very good in these inside forward positions, he got his goal by being in a striker's position, with Levi Colwill pushing higher up the pitch. I'd love to see Mudrick get another goal and keep that confidence up for the upcoming fixtures, which are much harder than this one. Let's quickly take a look at the defensive phase too. I think similarly to the Brighton game, we'll set up in the 4-4-2. We altered this slightly against Fulham into more of a 4-1-4-1, but I reckon we'll revert back to the original for this game, with Cole Palmer and Jackson acting as a pressing two, with two banks of four behind them. As I've spoken about previously, this works for us due to the middle of the pitch being virtually impossible to play through. We leave spaces on the wings for opposing teams, but we don't really mind them having the ball in these areas, as our defenders plus Sanchez are great at preventing crosses from 
from being converted, and players can't really cut inside against us from the wings either. I think this is going to be another rung on the success ladder for Chelsea. The team's getting a few good results together in a row now, and we have the opportunity to really get going before the two-week break and get our season more like it should be with three more points. A victory here would push us up to 11 points, which is enough to leapfrog Man United and Crystal Palace if those two lose, or if United draw, get above them at least into the top 10. For a score prediction, I am pretty confident this time around too. I think we will win this game, and I expect goals like we've seen from most of Burnley's home games this season. I'm going to go for 3-0, with Chelsea taking all three points before the break. I'm going to say that our goals will come from Jackson, Mudrick, and Enzo getting his first for the club, but I wouldn't be surprised if Broya comes off the bench to bag another either. But that was just my lead-in match preview for Chelsea vs Burnley. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these possible lineups in the comment section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from MonoCFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues!